In this puffer fish grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can use this simple tween two surfaces tool from Pufferfish plugin. And as you can see, I can convert a surface to another surface easily by giving this a number. And I can control that with a graph, as you can see here. Uh, I can also move the surface a little bit up and use a multiple surface based on a tween, which you can see we are converting a flat surface to a deformed surface. So this tutorial will uh, help you to understand how the tween two surfaces work. Okay, before we start the tutorial, if you're new to our channel, you can watch this video up here, which is about Grasshopper and why you should learn it. And if you want to learn more about Grasshopper and advanced tutorials and lessons, we have a course, which I will put the lessons up here. You can check it out and enroll in the course. Okay, so let's just get started from scratch. And what I want to do is to uh, go here to the surface and to the primitive and make a plain surface, okay? So before we start the Pufferfish plugin and go forward, let's just put the bifocals plugin so you can see what's happening. I'm going to teach you how to use a point attractor to deform a surface and then use the tween surface of Pufferfish plugin. So let's just give this a size. Uh, because this is a domain input, as you can see here, if I give a number to this, it's going to be from zero to that number, okay? so. This is going to make this surface from 0, 0 to 12.5 to x and y, which we can control here. Okay. The next part is to deform the surface based on point attractor. I'm going to use a point attractor from Evaluate Surface. And if you don't know what Evaluate Surface is, I'm going to put the tutorial up here. We have talked about Evaluate Surface before. And you can watch that, okay? So reparameterize the surface. So we will have 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 for the dimension. And in the evaluate surface tutorial, we talked about using an MD slider. And you have to watch that tutorial to understand why we are using this. But you can see that this can move a point attractor on a surface. Now I'm going to copy this and make another one. Use the shift key. Put this up. You can see that we have two point attractors which we want to control. Okay, before we can, uh, deform the surface, what we need is a series of points. Okay, the concept of point attractor is a little bit tricky. If you uh, just uh, feel that this tutorial is a little bit advanced or you don't understand, I will put also another tutorial up here which is about attractors. I've talked about an uh, example of orient uh, orientation and made with a point attractor. So I'm going to make this fast, but if you want to more details, you can watch that tutorial. So now what we want to do is to go to the surface and use this divide surface tool and divide the plane surface into the UV counts. So let's just give this a number. The U and the V, you can see that we can divide the surface uh, based on the numbers we want. So if I just go to the points, you can see that this is an output which is in groups. So it's 34 groups in 34 rows. So these are the rows. And what we want to do is to flatten this because we don't need these groups. We want all of these points to be in one group, right? Which is actually the zero group. If you don't know again what flatten means, I will put it up here. Uh, a flatten and graft, I will explain that in that tutorial. Okay, let's just flatten this and have all of those 1000 points in one group. You can also watch this in the panel so you can see that we have this in the group zero. Okay, now what we want to do is to, based on the point attractor, we need a CP point. Remember, we use the CP point uh, based on the attractor tutorial. And remember, don't use the closest points. That's another one. Uh, you can use that for other purposes. But for now, we can use the closest point. So now we can use the CP point. The grid of points goes to the point and the point attractor goes to the cloud, okay? So we use this technique to find the closest point. Let me just show you with a line. If I just draw a line from these points to the closest points, you can see that this is dividing these points uh, based on the nearest uh, point attractor. 
So it's going to find the distance between those points to the nearest point attractor, okay? So now what we want to do is to move these points up. So I'm going to use the move in the Z direction. And now we want to use this distance to move it. If I give this to the Z, you can see it's going to move based on the point attractors. Let's just move this. You can see that it's affecting the movement of the points. But if we want to control that, instead of just giving a distance, I'm going to use the attractor technique. Again, you have to watch the tutorial, but for the fast method we can use, we use a remap, which you can download from our website. So it's going to be from 0 to 1. It's going to scale all the distances to 0 and 1. Then we're going to use a graph, which we can simply use a graph, maybe a busier distribution. And again, we're going to use a remap. So this remap is going to scale uh, this. Let me just explain this. We have the distances. We scale them to 0 and 1. And the reason is because we want to use a graph mapper. And the graph mapper is between 0 and 1. So we scale them down to 0 and 1. Then we use the graph mapper to uh, basically change the distribution from linear into uh, nonlinear. Okay, So it's going to, instead of having a movement like that, it's going to be something like this. So we can use this graph mapper. Then we are going to scale it back into the minimum and the maximum we need. So I'm going to give this to the minimum and the maximum and this to the Z direction, okay? So now you can see that we can increase the minimum and the maximum and change the distribution. You can also use a sign distribution if you want. This is really great. You can combine multiple graphs. So I can just have two graphs combined. The first one is a busier. So you can see that you can also produce different patterns. So remember, you can combine those graphs. And after that, we can make a surface from those points, which is the uh, end of the first part of this tutorial. We have to go to the surface and use this, uh, let's find it out, in the freeform section surface from points we need these points to go to the points and we have to give this the number of points in the u direction okay when we divided the surface into thir uh, 33 divisions count it's going to give us 34 okay one plus this and let's just show this i'm going to decrease that to three and you can see that it has one two three and four divisions, right? So it's going to be uh, this number plus one. So I'm going to give this to the U count and go to the expression and type X plus one. That's it. We have the surface. We can just turn everything off. Turn back on the surface from points. Now you can see that we can control that with a graph and also with a point attractor, which is this point. Okay, so this first part was how we can deform a surface and produce uh, deformation based on point attractor. We can also change the minimum and the maximum to produce something like that. And if you want to know more about attractors, we have the several lessons in the course section. So remember to check out our course. We have uh, point attractors, uh, uh, surface attractors, curve attractors, image attractors, and we have talked about every attractor in the course section. Okay, so now we have the second surface we want to tween that. So now if you go to the Pufferfish plugin and go to the surface, you can find a section. Let me just put this here so you can see it. We have a section for tweening between surfaces. I'm going to use this tween two surfaces, which is really easy. And let's just put this tween between two surfaces. The surface A, we had it. It was the plane surface. And the surface B is this one, right? 
Okay, uh, this is really similar to the tween curve section in Grasshopper. You can see that it has, we have talked this uh, about the tween curve, you can also watch that tutorial. It has a number between 0 and 1. So what we want to do is to also give a number between 0 and 1 to the factor. So if I just give a number between 0 and 1, you can see that it can change from 0 to 1. Right, so a trick we can use is to just turn everything off, deform our surface with this 0 and 1. Let's just increase the deformation so we can see the results. We can also scale up the surface a little bit. We can just use a sine wave maybe, make it more beautiful and put that point attractor, one of those at the center, so you can see it something like that. And now we can just move that from 0 to 1. So you can also use that for animation if you want, or you can give a range of numbers. We have talked about range. Uh, search for the range tutorial, and we have talked about this. So if I give this, it's going to make a 0 and 1 divided by steps. We can just define it here, and that will produce different surfaces at between 0 and 1, right? So this is going to produce those surfaces. You can increase the steps. You can see that we have this. We can also move that surface if we want a little bit up. So we have to change these numbers. So let's just go to maybe 300 and 300 and increase the height of the surface. So let's just go up. Just go up, and here we have the surface. So you can see that if I change it, it's going to affect all of those tween surfaces. We can change the deformation and change the numbers, and then simply just bake this to produce the tween surfaces, okay? So this is the way you can use the tween two surfaces to make it. If you want to uh, have better results, maybe just more accurate, you can just increase the point sample. Uh, maybe 10 is fine. Because if you increase that, it's going to uh, slow down the algorithm. But 10 is fine. You can see that the results, let's just, let me just decrease that so you can see how it's affecting the results, right? It's giving you more accurate surfaces. Uh, if you want a smooth uh, surface with a less number of UV uh, curves, you can just type rebuild and use this rebuild surface, which is again from Pufferfish plugin. So let's just go to the surface. And here we have this rebuild surface. You can use that rebuild surface to rebuild this surface with maybe 15 number of UV counts and you can see that this is going to give you a more uniform uh, distribution of the UV curves on the nerve surface okay so that's how you can do it you can also use this tween surface with two set of surfaces in Rhino maybe we just have a surface uh, rebuild this one Use the Alt key to make a copy and use maybe a soft edit surface to deform that. Okay, I have to increase the distance. Let's just rotate this 90 degrees. So remember, you can also work this into these two surfaces. Let's just connect a surface to this from the Parms menu and check it out. The first surface and the second surface. So now you can see that you have a tween between them. You can again use the factor if you want to just change between the first and the second, or you can just use a range, right?
Uh, for an exercise, if you want to make the tween surface, I'm going to give you a tip for those who want to have more exercise in Grasshopper. If you want to make tween surfaces, what you have to do is to divide this surface into points. It's really easy, but I'm not going to give this so you can exercise on this algorithm. Okay, divide the two surfaces, then connect them with lines. Okay. And then when you connect the lines, you have to divide those lines into the number of tween surfaces you want. You will have a cloud of points, and then you can use that surface from points tool. Uh, you have to use those flip matrix. I'm going to give you a trick and a tip for that flip matrix to uh, use those points in the number you want, and then make that from surface from points. So that can be a good exercise if you want to make the tween two surfaces uh, by yourself and without a plugin, but you can see how easy it is to use this. And it has another function that says, okay, let's just change that. You can have tween between through surfaces and consecutive surfaces. It's really great. And in the future, I'm going to give more tutorials about Pufferfish. So stay tuned, and I will link that uh, in the channel. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel. See you next time.